Good morning. Hello, everyone. I'm the Roaming Gourmet V Carter, and I am here um, with the Leesburg Public Library. And today we're going to be doing another cookbook review. But before we get started, I just want to remind everyone that the Leesburg Public Library is online and all of our cookbooks that I showcase here are available at the Leesburg Public Library and the Lake County Library System. So today we are going to be doing our book, um, Every Day is Saturday. This is the book we're going to be doing today. Every day is Saturday. Today is not Monday, so today would be a perfect day to read this book because you could wish that today was Saturday. <laughs> so um, before I get started, I just want to remind everyone that I'm the Roaming Gourmet V Carter, and I am here live at my cooking school, and I just want to check because we had to say goodbye to our beloved Tim, our sound guy who has moved on to greener pastures. Yeah, but he'll be missed. And I just want to know, Courtney, do I have my mic on? <laughs> okay. <laughs> I would have, should have did a sound check, but so we're getting it together. Us ladies here, we're, we're managing. So I, I didn't want to do like a whole show with no mic on. So that, that works for me. Um, so we're here at my creative space and cooking school in downtown Leesburg, the Kitchen Cooking School. And you can visit us online at thekitchencookingschool.com. You can find out when our cooking classes are. You can also find out when our creative space classes are. And those classes could be anything. Um, so anything that you wanna learn, get off your crafting list. You could probably learn how to do it here at the cooking school. I think I, I'm hoping I turn my griddle off instead of to 4,000. I saw smoke. <laughs> so if you keep seeing it's rising up here and I'm getting more, I start to glow more, it's the griddle. But you know, it's nothing like having a hot griddle when you get ready to do what you gotta do. So um, I just wanted to give you guys those notes. Oh, and the address here is 1215 West Main Street. I'm just throwing in shameless plugs. <laughs> Our projected grand opening date, guys, I just found out this morning, is going to be Saturday, March the 20th. Yes, I'm so happy. So we'll, we will be open before then, but that's our grand opening, and we're going to have, we're going to be able to come in and do some tastings, sign up for some classes. So there'll be clowns and balloons. No, I was just kidding. <laughs> But we will uh, we'll be ready. Oh, one more, Debbie. You, Debbie said I could do the announcement, so I'm like on a roll with the announcements and stuff. You know, besides all the wonderful things that are happening at the library, which are awesome, I just wanted to send a big shout out to my little sister who came all the way from Virginia to help me really unpack this place. She kind of put a little boot in my butt and got me going, and so... Thank you, sissy. Yes, yeah, she came in and really got it going. And so thank you, sister, and to everybody who's helped us here. So let's get down to why we are here. Besides hearing me chat, Every Day is Saturday by Sarah Copeland. And um, I like this book. She has a beautiful, it's like all the books we've been doing, they are beautifully photographed. Isn't that beautiful? So, um, like I said, it's real good. It's a book full of recipes and strategies of cooking. And um, it's, it's for you to be, for the everyday Saturday premise is cooking. So um, any day that you eat, you felt like you put a lot of effort into it when you actually didn't. But um, I think it's beautiful. There's chapters like breakfast and brunch, um, cooking for friends, mains, sweets, drinks, and then kind of the, the foundation of this book, projects. That's the Saturday part of this book, the projects. And I love this book, um, the things that have, I love the part in this book that says things about uh, things you should have on hand and the, uh, let's see what it says. 
trying to say that chapter. Things to have on hand to make life more delicious. That's it. It was a mouthful. So I like this chapter because if you are someone who doesn't cook, hasn't cooked in a while, don't cook often, or you are a foodie, you cook, you're a chef, and you want to know why she has certain ingredients, how she uses them, how they can be used in the book, this is, I think, is perfect because a lot of times when you're reading cookbooks and recipes and you want to know, well, why do they have this particular flour over that flour? And, you know, like I like almond flour, but I'm not going to use it all the time. How can I store it? So she talks about all of that. So I really appreciated that from the book. Also, there's like a little pantry list here, too, and um, some things that you should actually have. And she really gets down to it. I'm not big of an organizer, but she literally tells you to pull everything out of your closet, the pantry, and then evaluate. I don't think I'm ready for that kind of self-evaluation right now. Because it goes down to stuff like, I mean, literally, like, do you use it once a week, every six weeks? And I, there's too much guilt involved with that, so I'm thinking I wouldn't do that. Um, but now that we're home more often, I think this book is a good way to help you get back in the kitchen, develop some skills, um, and get some pretty nifty recipes. I mean, like, even in the very back, it's probably hard to see because there is a, um, what is this? A spinakabakabia. Um, no, it's the flaky Greek crust. Um, she has it in here. But anyways, it says project, and it'll come back to me. But, like, she has Sunday sauce. And, you know, if you're going to make sauce on Sunday, if you're going to make a good marinara, most Italian women will tell you it's going to have to simmer all day, my mother's blah, 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 you know, on and on and on about how, you know, grandma did it this way, and but it was an all-day project. It is not quick. So she makes no jokes when she says project. But these are things that you can have, that you can uh, make on whatever day. Oh, spinach pie, that's what it was. You can make it on whatever day of the week it is, store it, and eat it. Monday, Tuesday, and don't have to feel like you're eating a Monday meal. Because to me, Monday is like, what drive through do you want? You know what I mean? Because So then I can say, hey, guys, we can actually have spinach pie because I made it Thursday. You know, so she tells you how to make things and how to store them. Um, so I really, really like that. In the different chapters she, that she has, like I said, there is midday meals, so let me go over some of the pictures. And another thing, this book, um, it's perfect for sitting up on an easel in kitchen, but it's not good for toting around. It's a big book. <laughs> <laughs> so um, the, uh, that's the one thing. So that's why you see me doing, moving it around. But like there's breakfast, beautifully um, photographed there. We're going to come back to the breakfast. Then... Um, grazing and platters, so I like that. She touches a little bit about um, entertaining and stuff like that. And I mean, like, look at this. I just kind of make my husband, uh, you know, his little salmon on bagel and throw it on a little plate, you know, and just, how about that? You know what I'm saying? That's really nice. So, I mean, she, she brings out the, you know, the, the inner Martha Stewart in you. And then there's things like braised short ribs. So this would be a project that you would um, do ahead of time. You could have it on Wednesday or something like that because there's a cooking time of three hours. So you are not going to come home from work and make this. This is not going to happen right after work. Um, then you have chapters like cooking for friends. Don't have them over. Just cook for them and tell them to come pick it up. 
Not right now. We're still trying to do that. So, but I think it's awesome because what pizza and look at that. I think it's beautiful. I'm not going to say my mouth did not salivate. My mouth salivated. And she has really nice pictures in here. Um, her life is lovely. Of course, that's what we always photograph. I'm going to do a cookbook and show you guys dirty dishes in the sink, laundry piled up. I'm going to show you life, but it's beautiful. I, I applaud her. But she's, she's realistic with her view. Um, look at this. This is oyster, chicken and oysters. So I like that, that she gets a new take on things. Um, she even has this like all occasion taco fest and she does these um, lengthwise plantain chips. I love that. So like I said, it is beautiful, the photography. Look at this. Isn't that pretty? And I, this is outside. There goes my microphone. See what we have to go through, Tim? There we go. Um, so I think this is gorgeous. And this is all stuff, and it's not stuff that isn't um, in the book. This is all stuff in the book. And I have to admit, you guys, it's not gonna, this is not a five-minute affair. If you were to do this table, you'd be planning the week to get it done. So um, not a bad thing, but just know there's planning involved. And she has my favorite chapter, sweet. Um, and I like the way um, I look. I always like can tell what kind of cook you are by how you break down a chocolate chip cookie and a bunt cake. And she does. And oh, her flourless um, chocolate cake. I have an awesome flourless chocolate cake too. So I thought she did pretty good with that. Like I'm a chocolate, like I'm the flourless chocolate cake expert. But you know, to me, if if I can make it, then you're good. So. <laughs> But her cookies, the way she broke down cookies and the best way to, to bake them to get nice cookies because I don't care who you are, if you are someone who is um, making your own chocolate co chip cookies, you want the end result to be pretty. You, you know, even, it's rare that you just say throw them on there unless you're just really trying to just get a snack. But if you're like saying, I'm gonna make you chocolate chip cookies, we are, we're going for the look. So I like that she shows you like, here, this is how you make show-stopping, picturesque chocolate cookies. And it's the truth what she puts on here. So this is a, her take of a chocolate chip cookie for modern times. And of course it is sprinkled with sea salt, perfect, sweet and salty together. So, uh, raspberry rhubarb crumble, which I have rhubarb in our recipe today. Um, so you can tell this is someone from the north. Look at this. Isn't that good? I love that. So I um, thought that was delicious. Now, wait till you see this. Wow. Yeah, come on, Sarah. We're all going to do this. <laughs> I think by the first apple, I'm over it, and I'm like, yeah, no. But I have, like I, she, you know, she still breaks it down, tells you how to do it, and um, I have watched this show um, called, I think it, Dana, Dinica Bakes, it's on Netflix, Dana Bakes, um, look it up, it starts with a D, but it's a, it's a, um, Bangladesh um, restaurant tour, but she was she's first second generation born in London, but her, her background is Bangladesh, and she is the restaurant owner and she loves to bake. So she has a show of baking, and um, she's in the UK. And so we I watched an episode. It's a series, and one of the people that she showcased on her show was a woman who bakes pies and tarts. And I didn't take any notes. I was just purely trying to enjoy the show. But the woman, like I said, look up the, the show. It's the first um, It's the first one in the series, the first episode of the series. And this lady makes the most gorgeous tarts. And I mean, this to me reminds me of that lady's tart. So um, look at that. You'll see, you might be inspired to do something. So like I said, it's, 
And it's really not that hard, but you know me, I'm just, I want to throw some apples in the thing, all topsy-turvy and get that top on them and get it bubbling. And this is her taking her apples. So like I said, her life is quite, con quite grand. <laughs> and then my, one of my favorite parts is you whipped cream, so now what? Yes, you like, I whipped all this delicious cream, what am I gonna do with it, yeah. right? So I think it was good that she kind of put this in the book and gives you some ideas on like making cream and then once you whipped it, things that you can make with it. I mean, even in the front when she talks about yogurt and um, fruit for breakfast, what are some of the first things you think about with yogurt and fruit for breakfast? Yeah, mix it, yeah, fruit on the bottom, get it going, right? This woman takes yogurt and she says, let's get some premisin and um, currants. I'm, I'm, I'm going to find it. Just stuff that we don't normally think about, you know, with fruit. Yogurt with, yogurt bowls with currants and peaches. Yes. So, I mean, she goes from this simple to five minutes to you can get the braised short ribs in three hours. It's up to you. So it goes <laughs> all across the board with that. And then um, homemade oat almond milk. So like I said, this book really, really gets you back into the kitchen. You can dig deep, homemade, your own homemade oat almond milk. You can go light, mix up some fruit and um, yogurt and honey. But it is getting you to think, use your uh, brain in the kitchen. So that was one thing I can appreciate about this book. And even her easy chicken liver pate, which is 30 minutes. So, and I, that's the one thing that I pride myself on knowing how to make. And I feel like with this book, if you have this book and it goes straight to the projects page, spend the whole weekend just going over this book and picking out like, I want to learn how to make the sauce. I want to do the pate and then learn it and then make it like your own recipe, your own heirloom type recipe. Cause like when I do the pate, what I like to do is I, on that little fat layer of the top, which is the butter layer. I sprinkle a little curry on mine. Yeah, so that's like my thing. So if someone asks for it, I know they're asking for it the way that I made it with a little spicy, you know, with a little curry on the top. And then it doesn't taste so chicken liver pate-ish. <laughs> Even though it is what it is, right? But it just has a nice um, flavor to it. So go and learn how to do recipes like that in this book and, and turn it into your own. Because like I said, there's a lot here. I mean, the only green sauce you need for like, and so there's a recipe in here for chimichurri steak. So she has the recipe, recipe for chimichurri, but then back in the projects is the actual sauce for it. And we know that you can use that sauce on a lot of different um, things. Also, everyday dressing. So um, I like that too. Lemon shallot, tahini green goddess, which is real popular right now. Everybody likes the tahini green goddess. Creamy parmesan. Then she gets into vegetable stock. And then pickled onions, which um, when we had the cafe, we did pickled onions. I discovered pickled onions and how simple and quick and easy they are and how you can put them on so many dishes. And I found myself running to the fridge, put some pickled onions on hot dogs, pickled onions on a hamburger, pickled onions on chicken. And it was like, it could just go through so many different um, things. Even just taking pickled onions and putting it on a roll. So <laughs> yeah, it's just so many things you can do with them. And so she has that in here. So. Like I said, you know, get in here, read this book. Um, oh, wait a minute, one last one. Oh, yeah. Salmon. So she shows you how to cure and poach salmon. Wow. 
which I see so many people overdoing salmon. Salmon is not white. If you cook your salmon and it's white, you have overcooked your salmon. And poached salmon, um, salmon to me is best enjoyed when it's been cured or poached, when it almost looks like it hadn't been cooked. That's when it's, it's best tasting. And it actually has been cooked and treated. And it's not hard. It is so easy. All you need is a little patience. You need a few days to, to um, cure your salmon in the refrigerator. But again, here she shows you how to do it. She uses beautiful photography. Um, yeah, right? And, and it's really, it's easy. Let me tell you the time on this because I have to. So your oil poached salmon is an hour. See, you're not going to come home from work and start this. And then your um, goblock is two to four days, which I like mine on the four-day side because I want to make sure it's done. <laughs> so like I said, this is something that, um, say, you, on Saturday, you decide, hey, this, this week I want to eat well. You can go ahead and Monday on your way home, pick up some salmon from wherever, go ahead and get that all laid out. And by the weekend, I mean, you did it. So by Tuesday, Wednesday, you've got nice salmon waiting for you. And you can put that in your lunch. You can use that for dinner. You can turn around and have it that following Saturday. So it's, um, I appreciate some of the things that she had, she had in this book. Now, on to the recipe. Because you go, Z, what did you find in here? Well, I looked inside the breakfast one because I figured since this class was going to be in the morning time, right? All right, thank you, Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> I have an audience, I really do. You know, you can do like on the Wendy Williams show and everybody's going like, hey. Um, where is my recipe? I marked it with these tons of, oh, here it is. So another thing is that she has new recipes and, or things I haven't seen in a while, but also she has a take on a few um, southern staples that she's done with a twist and kind of brought the north and the south together, I think with the rhubarb and the cherries. And then Johnny cakes, or whole cakes, is what we call them. So this is her um, Johnny cakes with rhubarb and sour cherries. So I thought, oh, that'll be something delicious to make because we're, we'll be able to eat it. <laughs> right? So this is, and it's easy, guys. It's so easy. Johnny cakes. And um, rhubarb and with rhubarb and sour cherries. So what I did was, and it's a typical, typical um, pancake type, you know, Johnny cakes recipe. Nothing um, spectacular about it. You do your um, dry ingredients and then your wet. So in this bowl, I have the dry ingredients, which is the flour, sugar, baking soda, sea salt. So I'll put that together. And then what makes these Johnny cakes and not pancakes is fine or medium ground cornmeal. So that's what I have here. And then, so I'm going to take my whisk flour and add that. So mix those two together. And I turned on my griddle because I wanted that to start getting hot. So I'm mixing those things together. Uh oh. Uh -oh. Okay, I'm back. Commercial break. <laughs> so that's it. I mixed those things all together. Still here, guys. So then we'll get our wet ingredients. Where's that smoke? Mm. 
So I'm going to make, I need one more. So I got an egg, one egg. And it's just lightly beaten, beaten. So not too much, just trying to get that yolk cracked. And then buttermilk or um, what I like to call soured milk, but it is not sour milk. This is um, whole milk with the lemon juice or vinegar. I chose lemon juice. That keeps you from going out to buy a whole quart or more of lemon juice that you're not going to use. So I put that in there, and then I got my quarter cup of melted butter. Y'all, you have to say that when you use melted butter. You have to do the, the Paula Dean melted butter, y'all. So I got that in there, just whisk those things together. Now we are going to add the wet to the dry. I was like, where is my spoon? But my spoon is hanging out in the rhubarb. So what do I do? Still use it. Right? Still right. use it. So busy stirring up the rhubarb. Wait a minute. I don't have to do that. I'm getting used to my new place, everybody. I have a spoon here to magic. Um, so now I'm going to just add my wet and dry together. And Johnny Cake um, batter is kind of like, I have a little bit different consistency because you remember you have half and half of um, cornmeal and flour. So it's going to be a little bit thicker. Okay. So I went and pour it all in there, um, all of my milk in there at the same time, my milk mixture, because you want to check your batter out. And I think I kind of have my batter like I want it. I'm going to... Um, Add a little bit more, just a teeny bit. Like I said, it's a little thicker. And you should be able to kind of smell that citric acid going on with the baking soda and um, the sour milk or buttermilk if you choose to use buttermilk. So, yeah, so now we have a nice. Batter going here, yay. So now Johnny Cakes, because Johnny Cakes are, like I said, they have the cornmeal in them. They're going to be a little thicker, and sometimes they tend to be drier. So add some melted butter, y'all, uh, to this. Right, and we hear that, right? So then she has like third cups, but I'm just gonna put like a dollop, make like little silver dollar size. So has anybody ever been to the Paula Dean restaurant in Savannah? No. So when you go to the Paula Dean restaurant in Savannah, they, um, well, this is years ago. Joy was still in high school, and we all know Chef Joy is a mommy and everything. <laughs> so you, um, when you are seated at the time when we went, they had, when you walked in, there was this woman, and all she did was make Johnny cakes. She had like a griddle station, and she made Johnny cakes, and I went, those must be really special that they have one dedicated person. That's all they do. Oh my gosh, what a racket. Because that lady's Johnny Cakes were awesome. I ate more Johnny Cakes than I did food. 
and I was really mad. So I said they knew what they were doing. I was like, I'm here for the Johnny Cakes. So I always say if I ever go back, I'm straight getting the Johnny Cakes. I'm just going to order sweet tea, half and half sweet tea, um, three lemons, get my order in, and um, Johnny Cakes. That's all I need. That's all I need. So I put this on the hot griddle. You can use the cast iron skillet, whatever. Same premise almost as pancakes. Like we want to get these nice and um, hot cooking on the other side, that GBD golden brown deliciousness on the other side. But we also want to leave these kind of wet because when we flip them over to cook more, we don't want the inside to dry out all the way through. So we just want to make sure. So let me turn this up just a teeny bit because I don't have any more action. And I'm going to actually scoot these over a tiny bit so I can make two more in the middle. So you guys, like I said, these are, um, you can do a third of a cup, but I just did like a good spoonful because I want to make this a little bit larger than silver dollar, but I didn't want it pancake size because then it can get to be a little bit too much. So I'm waiting for some of that bubble action. So in the interim, I did um, rhubarb. She tells you to go to the store, buy some fresh rhubarb. Not happening this time of the year. I can't, you know, I didn't even look for it. But I got this in the frozen food section. And it had just enough for the recipe. And then I got some bada bean cherries. They still have the stems on it. So I liked that. And then you had, you want to use real maple syrup. You don't want anything that has like uh, corn syrup or anything like that. You want the maple syrup because that's just going to kind of set off those cherries and, um, and things like that. Hey, Deb, I have a favor. <laughs> um, in our first closet back there, when you walk straight in, there are plates. <laughs> I forgot the plates. So um, we'll get the plates going. So this is still like around the outside. It's starting to dry up, but my middle is still kind of wet, and that's what I want. So we're going to flip those. Isn't that pretty? There we go. Yeah, and don't be in a rush. Don't turn your stove up. You know, if you don't think these are going the way you think it should, don't turn your stove up. Don't rush them because there's a teeny bit of sugar in here and the cornmeal. And the cornmeal just takes, when you add cornmeal, it's going to be denser. It's just going to take a little bit more time to cook. And um, if you rush it, you're just going to burn them. They're going to be burnt on the outside. And um, Debbie bought plates for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Debbie, we only needed three. It was three of them. So. There we go. So thanks, Deb. This is my Vanna Deb White. Um, so, I mean, they're, they're so pretty. And so the one thing I do like is being able to recreate a recipe successfully because that um, nothing gets me worked up more. And this is kind of what it looks like, you guys. I don't know if you can see that. But the outside, it's not as shiny. The pancake is no longer spreading. And there's bubbles just around the edges of it. The middle is still wet. Versus when we do a pancake, I'm telling you to wait for all the bubbles to come all the way through. All the way. The middle, all the way out. Whole cake, I'm not going to tell you to do that. That's so beautiful. And I'm, yeah, because then this is what you get when you flip them over. See, that's nice. And so I definitely want to get those off. Put that there because those are hot. And I know these are ready. 
I don't know about you guys, but like when I make pancakes or anything like this, whole cake, the first one is mine. No one sees, because I'm like, it's hot. It's my best looking one. You know, you always make your first, the prettiest one is the first one. And so it's like, it's mine. And um, another thing, when, if you're making a lot of pancakes or Johnny cakes, um, have a piece of foil and have your oven, like preheat your oven to 350 and turn it off. And then as your pancakes or Johnny cakes in this um, instance, as they're getting done, put them on a plate, cover them with foil and push them in the oven. And you'll have um, perfect, perfectly warm pancakes for everybody. So I guess I should cook these all. There's 12 people here. <laughs> so we just want to make sure all 12 people get this. but we won't tell. So, um, with me doing a little, around, I guess a quarter of a cup. Is that what the, about what this looks like? Quarter of a cup here. Um, portions, we got two, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We got ten. So again, you can make these big as you want, small as you want. Right. Check it. Don't, yeah. That's what I'm talking about, just golden brown. And using that butter gives you that nice crunchy edge. I love that part. I love that buttery edge. So, and one thing about Johnny cakes, because they're so um, sturdy, you can actually take these, um, make them, lay them out on a cookie sheet and let them cool, and then wrap each one with a layer of wax paper in between and freeze them. And then you can defrost them and you can make kind of like a repa with the cheese. Do you know what I mean, Courtney? Do you, have you ever had those? That is two cornmeal pancakes like we got here with either queso blanco or provolone um, cheese and um, sandwich in between them. I love them for breakfast. It's, kind of, it's a nice savory breakfast. Um, so you can make those um, just kind of like a quick version of those. So no one get mad at me because I know that's not the true version of that, but that's a nice quick version. So again, not so shiny, bubbles around the edges, you will get that every time. So nothing more boring than watching Chef Z boil water and make these cakes. So let's get these out. And then I did the, um, so she has where you're supposed to take your um, rhubarb inside of your, put it in this pot, let it start to boil without breaking down. Um, that's for fresh. So if you have uh, frozen rhubarb like I did, my suggestion is to heat the um, maple syrup up and then put the rhubarb in and then turn your stove off and let the maple syrup heat the rhubarb. So otherwise you get broken down um, rhubarb. Then if you don't mind, that's okay too. And then you just add the cherries at the end and you add a little bit of cherry juice just to get that red that she's talking about. So. That looks amazing. Yeah, you want this one? Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to get my mind at the bottom. I, I, so, I mean, you know, look at that. It's every time. And I love these. And when you make them, you guys, Deb, you didn't get, you only did what I told you to do. So I guess you have to eat these with your hands. But <laughs> after class, I guess I'll get us support. I'm going to get, since every month when you guys come, you guys can watch how I've grown into this place <laughs> and how we've got everything accustomed to what we're doing. And it will only get better, I promise, I promise.
So again, it was my pleasure, let me get, grab my book, Being Able to Review Every Day is Saturday by Sarah Copeland. This is available at the Leesburg Public Library. Um, they can request this through the system too if they're not in Leesburg, but we prefer you come to Leesburg and get this. The library does have drop off and pick up outside. It is open. I think it's wonderful because they limit how many people are in there. My son and I were there this past week, so I thought it was refreshing um, to be there in the library and it was not crowded. Everything was safe. The people had on masks, there was hand sanitizer, so I really enjoyed being at the library and I thought it was a good way to kind of get out of our fishbowl <laughs> safely. But this book is available every day is Saturday. How many copies? Awesome sauce. Thank you so much for joining me. Don't forget to go to my Facebook page. Thank you guys. Bye-bye.